In this video, I show you three core exercises you can do when you're having sciatica pain that can even bring you relief. Now, before we start, I wanna be extra clear. As a clinician, I would never treat a patient with sciatica pain with core exercises first. However, core exercises are super important because that treats the why someone might have sciatica in the first place. So most sciatica typically comes from the spine. So what happens when the spinal structure has too much stress on it, it can irritate nerve roots. Those nerve roots send signals down your legs. And if those nerves are irritated, you get that signal down the leg. Think of it as like kinking a hose. If you kink the hose, there's a lack of water flow that goes down that hose. Well, if you have a, a kinked nerve, you have a lack of electrical flow that goes down that nerve. Thus, you have sciatica pain. So there are ways to fix that, but that's indiv individualized with a patient encounter, with history taking, uh, and assessment. We can't do that reasonably through a video. However, what we can do is teach you how to reduce some of that stress on your spine by teaching you how to use Use your core appropriately because when you use your core appropriately there your function that takes stress off your spinal structure and if you can do these pain-free it's a great way to improve your core to take that stress off the spine but you may actually get some relief from it as well exercise one is going to be a supine crook lying marches what is that I'll show you first we're going to assume the crook lying position you lie on your back called supine and your knees are bent your feet are flat and first, what you wanna do here is check underneath your back. There likely is gonna be a space underneath here, as you can see here, and what you wanna do is flatten that space down to the ground. So take your fingertips, put them underneath the small of your back, and then push down until you feel your back muscles push against your fingertips. You wanna keep your back there the entire time. Now that I have that position, my ribs and my pelvis are connected. Now what I can do first or next is breathe in my abdomen. This is a super important part of any core exercises is when to breathe down here and now up into the chest. So go and take a few deep breaths here through your nose only, unless you have sinus issues. If you have a hard time with this, I have a video about core breathing up here, super important. Okay, now that you have this position, what we're gonna do is do some movement at the legs. So with the core, the core is an anchor point for movement of your arm and legs, so we're gonna train that. So now that the back's flat and keeping it that way, what I'm gonna do is take one of my knees and slowly raise it up toward my chest, maintaining a flat back, and then slowly bring it down. I'm gonna slowly switch sides, make sure it's pain-free, and back. Good, what we don't wanna do is lift that knee up and really round the back like this. It's also not a bridge, we're not pushing the heel down. Come back down, and on the way down, we don't wanna lift the back up and arch underneath here. We gotta keep that back flat. If you have a hard time with this, take a rolled up towel, put it underneath your back, you can feel that uh, pressure there, okay? So we'll do this 10 times each side, slow and controlled, and then add the breathing in there. Don't time it with your movement, just breathe throughout it. Good, this really works the core ABCs, alignment, breathing, and now we're controlling motion at the legs. Good. Exercise two is the oblique sit side bridge. So what we're gonna do is work the sides now since we work the front. Our body moves in three planes of motion. We have forward and back, side and side, and rotation. We got the frontal part, so now we're gonna get the side to side. For this exercise, we're gonna assume this sitting position. We're gonna go on the forearm here, knees stay stacked, and typically what will happen is, is you'll slouch your shoulder up into your ear like this, like in a sexy beach pose position. You wanna do the opposite. Pull that shoulder away from your ear, nice and straight through here so we're not dipping down, right? So my nose, my chest, and my belt line should all be in a line here, and my elbow underneath my ear. So not way out here, right here. Now that we have this position here, I want you to think about your sitting up out of a chair. So my hips are creased here, my knees are bent. I'm gonna bring my hips up and forward at the same time. And as you can see, I'm kind of a straight line from my nose down to my crotch area. And we're maintaining this position. Okay, now that I have this, we're gonna hold here and we're gonna breathe through it. Now we're really working our obliques on the side, the hips, and we're stabilizing, stabilizing the lateral part of the core here. Again, your spine is in a neutral position. There's no bending here, should be pain-free. 
We'll breathe here. Hold as long as you can. Typically, you know, you want to do at least 30 seconds. If you can't get 30 seconds, you really got to work on this and strengthening and stabilizing your core. If you're here for more than a minute, we can add a little bit of motion, just like we did with the last exercise and the marching. We can simply do is march in place here. I'm going to lift my top leg. I'm going to bring it up and then down. I'm going to bring it up and down. And we can do 10 reps or so, but really it's can you hold it for more than 30 seconds? And if you can, keep going, keep breathing through it with perfect form. If you start to falter, you get tired, you can't breathe through it, we go ahead, stack the knees, bring the hips back and down with slow, subtle control, not crashing down here. Make sure to repeat on the other side, because we have two sides, right? So same thing, we'll start here. We're in that slouchy position, pull the shoulder away, nice and straight come up nice and tall, hold for time. Exercise three is the bare knee taps. So the bare position is a more challenging position for your core, but now we're integrating some hip and pelvic control in there as well. All right, for this one, I'm gonna throw on my core 360 belt. What this does, this helps me feel my breathing in this position because with this one, I can't wrap my hands around or put my hands in my belly because my hands will be occupied on the ground. You'll see here in just a second. So this has some spots, two in the front and then two on the back here. And what these do is that I can feel my breathing when I do this move. If you're interested in one of these things, phenomenal tool, link in the description. So we're gonna get into our bear position here. So we first start in hands and knees, otherwise called the quadruped position. And from here, my hands are underneath my shoulders. My knees are underneath my hips and we wanna first get into a neutral spine. What does that mean? Well, in the first exercise, we could flatten our back to the ground to get our, pel our ribs and our uh, pelvis aligned. Here, we have no ground to push into, so we have to find our position. So what I want you to do very quickly is give me a J-Lo booty, like this, and then a plumber butt, right? It's called an anterior and posterior pelvic tilt, but who cares, that's not memorable. A J-Lo booty and a plumber butt, you'll remember forever. So we'll do that a few times. And it's just down here, it looks like a cat cow, but a cat cow is the whole spine. This is just kind of your booty going up and down your pelvis. Once you do that a few times, find that halfway in between point. That's your neutral spine, we want to keep that. Now that we have this position, right, we can breathe into the belt here. I can feel that expansion. If you don't have a belt, just check with your hands here. You're getting that breathing or uh, wrap something around your waist like an like a exercise band, okay? Now to get into the bear position. All the bear is is that we're lifting off from quadruped up like this. But notice my back stays neutral and I'm lifting up from the legs. What I'm not doing is this here, which is a poor position. So my shoulders away from my ears, back flat, neutral, lift the knees up and I'm gonna hold and breathe. If you can do this pain-free and you can breathe through it, then we can add the, the knee taps, the motion. So we'll start at quadruped and then we're slowly gonna come up into bear and then drop down, touch the knees and back. So we're doing bear knee taps. Do these for at least 10 reps. However, if you're just shaking through this and you can't get to 10, that's totally fine. Work yourself up to 10 reps. Take a break, repeat that for three sets. Really, all three exercises, you know, repeat four, three sets for the oblique sit, do both sides, and then you repeat that once a day. By doing this, you will ensure, and doing this pain-free, you, you may get some relief from your sciatica pain, but at very least, you'll make sure that you're reducing the stress off your spine so that when you do recover from sciatica, you will have a solid foundational core to prevent that sciatica come from coming back in the first place. Now, if you're really, really into maximizing your core stability more than just beyond this, we have a full-on core strength and stability course where I take you through step-by-step -step every single position like this and then all the way up to squatting and deadlifting. So that way you have a bulletproof core, you're stabilizing, strengthening well. So you're not only reducing pain like your sciatica, but also improving your performance. Phenomenal course uh, for watching this video. There's a discount code and that link is in the description. Thank you.